I'm coming to you today with another swatch and unbox. And today we are doing the Crayola Education watercolors. And next to them are a set of regular Crayola washable watercolors. Now the difference between these two sets is that these are washable and these say education on them. And there isn't a whole lot of extra information available, but I do have some guesses. Uh, I do know that the washable watercolors are dye based because dyes wash out a little bit easier and they contain a lot of glycerin. I am assuming that the education set, while still containing a lot of glycerin, probably contains pigment, much like the Yarka and the Prang watercolors we've already taken a look at. Now, I picked these up at David Art Supply. It is an art supply store in New Orleans, Louisiana. Actually, it is in Metairie. If you're a Louisiana native, I ho really hope you go and give them your business as opposed to giving Michaels or Hobby Lobby your business because they are a locally lo owned, locally operated business. And they're not a sponsor. I just love what they're doing and I want them to continue to exist. So in both sets, we get eight colors. The box is, um, well, the white box sure looks like the clear box except with a white top. And it looks like we might get a little less color per pan. So the education set comes with a Crayola 1000 size seven round, whereas the regular Crayolas come with a Crayola 1127 in size three, both are made in China. The washables have a camel hair brush and this looks like a synthetic, like a Taclon with some sizing in it. We're gonna go ahead and clean that sizing out of the brush with a cup of clean water off to the sides. And I'm gonna swatch both of them for you guys today so that we can compare the two. And I am already working on my various watercolor gift guides for this season. And I have one in the works for very young artists. So if this set is any if this set is decent, it might end up on the list. Right now I have those Yarka watercolors already on there. So if you are watching this video because you're shopping for a young artist, uh, you should definitely check out natosoup.blogspot.com. Now I was using a water brush to squeeze some water into my palette. It ran out of water, so I'm just gonna dollop some water in to the last remaining three and I will zoom out so you guys can see what I'm doing. And fear not, I don't normally work with watercolor, but I do try to do affordable, accessible watercolor reviews at least once a year. I've been doing a lot of them this year, in fact, so that everyone at every price point, at every age level can learn and enjoy watercolor. So I'm gonna start with the education watercolors. We're gonna start at the top with that brown. And then I think underneath I'll do the washable watercolors. Oh yeah, already, just with the browns, there's a significant color difference, there's a significant coverage difference. The washable watercolor seems very thin, a little anemic in terms of color. I don't know that I would say the quote unquote education watercolor is dye based. All right, next is a purple. They're, they definitely seem to be more true to say traditional watercolor colors, whereas this looks like a true burnt sepia. This one's a little bit pale and a little bit red, maybe a burnt sienna, not burnt sepia, I meant burnt sienna. It's actually a very significant difference in the colors. These are interesting and different. In fact, you could almost have both sets. So that is the first three colors. I'm going to go ahead and remove them from my Fluid Easy block. This is another watercolor goodie that I that I talk about in those gift guides I'm working on. So, and we're using a block because it means we don't need to stretch our watercolor paper. The block is gonna hold the paper nice and tight. All right, so education versus washable. In fact, the washable 
so far are all quite a bit lighter than the education. The education are very, they have a lot of glycerin in them. They remind me a bit of Kuratake Gensai Tambi watercolors, which people keep asking me about um, as they are, <laughs> not. this is not the video for that. If you're interested though, I do have a blog post where I review them again at natosoup.blogspot.com. All right, so education washable, education washable, education washable. And the education watercolors seem to be um, more saturated. And the colors are nice. Uh, I wouldn't say they're on par necessarily with the Yarka or the Prang. I'm gonna have to do, before 2017 is over, I'm gonna have to do a big overview, multi-way comparison of all the inexpensive watercolors I have reviewed on this channel and at the blog so that you guys can see everything laid out side by side. Almost sounds like a Patreon goal, doesn't it guys? So I'm still working education, washable, and the washables feel very soapy. I dare say the education are also dye based, but maybe they're using more staining dyes or more intense dyes. So I'm going to lay these out side by side, and then I'll check in with you guys after they've had a chance to dry. So this is education and washable Crayola watercolors. When wet, colors are very vivid for both, although with the education, they're much more vivid. And there are some significant color differences between the education and the washable, which I think is really interesting. All right, guys, so I've allowed these to dry. As you can probably see, there's a fair amount of glycerin in them. What is interesting about these is that you could almost buy both sets and be able to use them together to get a wider range of colors because some of the colors are really quite different from the washable set. Although, um, doing a little digging and with some help from my friend Kabocha, I found out that the education watercolors are indeed dye-based and they are staining. A lot of uh, people online have complained that they're staining, but we're gonna see if they lift and oh, they do. And this is using the brush that came with these. So these would not, I cannot necessarily recommend these if you are buying watercolors for a child who uh, has an interest in art, wants to do comics, wants to do illustration, basically wants to do detailed art with many layers. These would just be really disappointing for them. So recently, I tested the Yarka watercolors and I'll go grab those. And let me see if I can find the illustration I did with these. So recently I tested these Yarka watercolors. They are pigment based as far as myself and Kabocha can figure. I was able to paint this cute little illustration with it. You guys can check out the full video. In fact, there is a tutorial on how to paint with inexpensive watercolors in that video. Um, these would still be my current pick for parents, educators who wanna buy decent student grade watercolors that perform very similarly to um, more adult, more professional watercolors, but don't cost an arm and a leg. I believe these are still under 10 bucks for the set. The pans are much larger, as you guys can see. I mean, mine are a little dirty from use, but the pans are much larger than either of the Crayola sets. So even though you are paying more, you're getting a lot more for your money. So this is still my recommendation. Um, like I told you guys earlier in the video, I am working on gift guides for various ages um, for specifically watercolor, although I may do some general art gift guides as well. So if you're looking for a complete one-stop shop list 
of watercolor or other art supplies to pick up for your intrepid young artists, make sure you check out natosoup.blogspot.com. And the only way I can afford to do these reviews, even though I am reviewing very inexpensive watercolor materials, is thanks to the generosity of my wonderful art nerds on Patreon. So if you enjoy tutorials like this, if, not tutorials, if you enjoy reviews like this, if you enjoy the expertise and input that I bring to the table, please head on over there and check out how you can support more content like this. So I hope you guys have a great day and I hope to see you again really soon. Bye guys.